Hello students, this slide may look familiar to you. Uh, we're just going to go over some a little bit more information as it pertains to levels of organi organization in living things. We're not covering chapters 2 through 5, but there's a little bit of information in these chapters that I think will help you with future content so everything will just fit together. So let's get started on this. We talked about an atom. It's the smallest particle of an element that displays displays all the properties of that element. And then what is an element? It's a substance that cannot be broken down into simpler substances. In other words, an element, you've heard, heard of a periodic table. With a periodic table, it has the elements, mo both naturally occurring and man-made elements listed on it with characteristics. Every element represented on that periodic table is made up of one type of atom. The body is composed of 95% of the body is composed of these elements carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. And these are the chemical symbols for those particular elements. And remember uh, the element carbon only has carbon atoms, hydrogen, hydrogen atoms, and so forth and so on. The atomic structure this is a very simplified slide, but let's just very quickly go over the atomic structure of an atom. It's composed of protons, neutrons, and electrons. P protons and, ne and neutrons are found in the nucleus, and spinning in an orbit around the outside of the nucleus are electrons. Let me just mention that the characteristics of the electrons, and especially in this outermost shell here, determines how one atom will bond to the other. And the formation of compounds is happen when a particle forms, when two or more atoms of different elements chemically combine, has to do with those outer electrons in the outermost shell of that atom. A molecule is two or more joined atoms. Now look at this. It says two or more joined atoms. It does not say from different elements. So a compound has to have two different elements and a molecule can be two of the same. Here's This is a molecule but it is not a compound. This is a molecule but it's not a compound. This is a molecule of, of glucose but it's also a compound because it is made up of different elements. This is a molecule of oxygen, a molecule of hydrogen. This is how it occurs in nature in our atmosphere, O2, hydrogen, H2, and this is um, glucose, and it is a compound and a molecule, and then I think you probably can guess what that one is, H2O, water is a molecule of, this is, represents one molecule of water. It is also a compound because it's two different ele atoms that chemically combine. And the subscript tells us the number of atoms found in that compound or that molecule. Two oxygens, and this is a molecule of two oxygen atoms, two hydrogen atoms with carbon uh, here in this glucose, six carbons, twelve hydrogens, and six oxygens. For this water, two hydrogens t to one oxygen is the ratio here. Mo these are called molecular formulas. Now, how to how do compounds form by chemical bonds. It is the attractive force which holds atoms together to form bonds. There are two different types and I'm not going into any more detail on these, but there are ionic and covalent bonds. To make these bonds it requires energy to form the bonds. When these bonds are broken, when you're breaking down one of these compounds, energy is released. So to, f to form a compound, you need energy. And to break the compound, it releases the energy. Now, more complex com compounds, 
you have micromolecules and then you have macromolecules. Macromolecules are many atoms bonded together to form very complex compounds. And these biological molecules, carbohydrate is an example. Um, the glucose molecule we saw earlier is a carbohydrate. It's a very simple carbohydrate, very easily broken down for energy. And this is representing a more complex carbohydrate like a starch. Okay, and then lipids, see how uh, complex that molecule is. These are called macro because they're very large molecules, proteins and nucleic acids. So you had atoms to molecules to more complex molecules such as carb carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids that give rise to a cell. The major parts of the cells are made up of those macromolecules. You have the nucleus, you have cytoplasm, cytoplasm's all the contents of the cell from the cell membrane all the way to the nuclear membrane. And there's the, the outer layer of the cell is the nuclear membrane. It has those macromolecules embedded in this membrane. And then you have compounds on the inside. Um, you have proteins, proteins, um, lipids, carbohydrates, so forth and so on. And here's the nucleus, the control center of the cell with all the genetic content. The cytoplasm has all the organelles in it and then the cell membrane. Organelles, okay, from macromolecules to organelles, form structures inside the cell. The chromatin is found within the nucleus. In the nucleus, it has the genetic information or the DNA. The mitochondria, this uh, organelle, this organelle here is the mitochondria and it ma is responsible for making the most ATPs which are energy currency for our cells to use to do all kinds of activities. ATP is very important for, for usable energy. Endoplasmic reticulum stores and divides, transport and synthesizes fats and helps to break down um, drugs and stuff like that, but it's sort of like a transport system and also synthesizes or makes other sub substances. Ribosomes is responsible for making proteins, those complex macromolecule proteins. And then f cells that work together for a specific function, they're structurally similar perform a specific function, forms tissues. There are four major types of tissues in animals, epithelial tissues, con connective tissue, muscle tissues, and nervous tissue. And I have included the chapters that include information about uh, what's found on, on each one of these slides. And again, some of these chapters are chapters we are not going to cover. Epithelial tissues, it covers the body surfaces including your skin on the outside of the body surface. It covers and lines internal organs. It forms tubes and ducts and it makes up glands. So there are, when we talk about glands that are in the endocrine system, we will be talking about glands that are made up of epithelial tissue. Here are the um, ducts within the kidneys and lining these ducts are epithelial tissues. Lining the stomach, epithelial tissue. This is the surface of uh, the skin and um, will be made up of this same type of tissue but this ha picture happens to be of the esophagus and um, so you'll notice that you have more round nucleus and as these layer after layer of these cells are pushed up there they die and uh, eventually flake off the surface so where wear and tear is greatest you're going to have more layers of epithelial cells this is a single cell layer of epithelial cells you'll learn more about this in ANP1 
Connective tissue binds structures, provides support and protection, fills spaces, stores fat. Some examples are loose connective tissues and fat uh, or adipose tissue is a type of loose connective tissue. You have dense connective tissue that form ligaments, provides support and protection, fills spaces, stores fat like this adipose tissue. These are fat filled adip adipocytes. Um, you have specialized connective tissues such as cartilage, bone, blood. Those are examples of specialized connective tissues. Muscle tissues. You have skeletal muscle tissues. You are responsible for knowing some of the muscles and their structures. And this is this makes up skeletal muscle and then smooth muscles, lines, internal organs. Um, it helps to squeeze things through these internal organs. It is not under conscious control where most activity of the skeletal muscles are, are under conscious control. And then you have cardiac muscle that is very similar to in structure to skeletal muscle with a, a few differences that you'll learn more about in AMP2. Nervous tissue is found in the brain and spinal cord. It um, bundles of the cellular processes called axons make up the nerves. These neurons are the basic cells of the nervous tissue and then the cells outside of the neuron here, neuroglial cells or supportive cells. An organ is a group of tissues with a similar specialized for function for form organs. And then you have organ systems, groups of organs that coordinate to carry out a specialized function, such as these found in the respiratory system. And all those organ system systems function together, making up an individual living thing called an organism.